Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you all. Welcome to Gra <laughs> Gracefully, no, Grace Gospel Missions NY. Yoo-hoo! Come on. I would like to request everyone to stand up. And let's greet one another. Let's walk around and let's greet one another. Welcome to the family. Come on, don't just stand up there. Go shake your, the hands of the of your friend, of your brother and sister next to you. Let's walk around. I know that you shake a little bit of your, you know, hands and legs to warm it up before we praise the Lord. Amen. So I would like to welcome also all our uh, viewers, all who are attendees who are in their home right now, in any part of your home. Let's worship the Lord. And today I would like to encourage you with what the Lord says in Psalms 25. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. And may the Lord answer all our prayers. Amen. Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day that you have given us. And we will shout for joy, Lord. We will shout of your goodness and we will continue to bless and thank your name oh god for all that you have done in our lives and we pray right now lord for all the people who are coming in this place may your protection and guidance be upon them and for those people who are worshiping with us in their own home may your spirit the holy spirit touch them oh god and enjoy your presence as we worship you father god we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand up, guys, and let's worship the Lord. Let's raise the banner, and let's keep on worshiping and thanking Him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
Praise God, the Lord. Amen. Thank you, worship team. You can be seated. Praise God. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, that you uh, that had joined us in person here in our center. Praise the Lord for coming. Praise God. Amen. And also those who are watching us through our uh, streaming, I welcome you and uh, I'm praying that God will uh, touch you with his wonderful blessing, the blessing of his words. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> so give us uh, the, uh, this morning a uh, special song. Amen. Janelle is here today. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, she will uh, give us a special note to prepare our hearts for the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Did you fall so far you should be ashamed of yourself so I was ashamed of myself the lies I believe they got some roots that run deep I let them take a hold of my life I let them take control of my life Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. Feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done. Look what you've done in me. You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Look at me now. Look how you made me new. The enemy did everything that he could do. Oh, but look what you've done. Suddenly all the shame is gone. I thought I was too broken. Now I see you were breaking new ground inside of me. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done. Look what you've done in me. You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Oh, but I go 
Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, uh, Danielle, for uh, that beautiful song. Uh, what have you done? Ang ginawa ng Diyos sa atin. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Um, here in the U.S., right after Thanksgiving, Christmas season officially starts, right? That's a wonderful thing. Although in the Philippines, uh, Christmas season has started long, long before uh, when the months uh, started to have the bear, like September, that's the starting point uh, that you can hear Christmas carols and see Christmas decorations already in the Philippines. Only in the Philippines, the longest Christmas season. Amen. You miss it? <laughs> Everybody that hears in the U.S. because uh, in the Philippines we don't have Thanksgiving. That's why the next uh, a big thing, you know, when uh, summer ends is the Christmas season. But here in the U.S., right after Thanksgiving, which happened last week, uh, you can see now uh, the festive uh, sites of... Uh, uh, the Christmas season, and you will see the homes started to put up their decorations. Although in our homes, we have decorated the inside of our homes uh, several uh, weeks ago. Okay, so um, we are just uh, waiting, um, you know, for uh, this season to put up our lights outside our homes. Although uh, you can see now, maybe you will travel along in your community, you can see the lights. Okay, that is uh, what I like about Christmas. You know, the lights when you, at night, when you walk by your community and some community you see different beautiful Christmas lights. Twinkle lights, different colors, white, uh, so beautiful, beautiful. And, uh, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, Christmas comes to what we call the darkest time of the year for almost half of the world that is in the Northern Hemisphere. It means when Christmas season comes at this time, the days are shorter, right? And the night, the darkness are longer. Okay, that happens on Christmas season. That's why... 4.30 in the afternoon is already starting to become dark. So, but uh, here we are in the U.S., we are experiencing the darkest, uh, the longer, the longest dark period of our year. And, uh, and it's beautiful because Christmas lights up the world, right? Christmas lights up the world in the darkest part of the year. You can see that even at night, although it's dark, you can see the lights that Christmas gives us. And I remember some part of, of here in Whitestone, there's a house that's really full of lights, full of decoration. We love to go there. I don't know if they put up. Put up, you know, everything. It's like a carnival. It's like a, a, a magic kingdom with all the lights, the horse, you know, Santa Claus, you know, reindeers from, from the rooftop to the gardens are all lights, are all decoration. And if we will go back to the first Christmas, we see that lights played a major role in the in the period in the in the time when Jesus Christ was born first of all we see when the angels announce the birth of Jesus Christ to the shepherds the bible says the sky brightens with lights and when the wise men from the east comes to page homage to the newborn king, they were guided by the bright star 
that's in the sky. Christmas is a kind of celebration. It is a celebration of God's light entering the world. Why this is important? Why is it important that we have to, to, to remember when this season comes, when, when Christmas season comes, it is a celebration of the coming of light into the world. The world that is pictured as dark because of sin. The period of well, uh, the world that is characterized by wickedness, by sin. And in the Bible, the term, the word that the Bible uses is darkness. When you say darkness and over, it means to say that the wickedness is all over the world. And that's the reason why uh, God judged uh, uh, the world through the flood, the time of Noah. Because darkness, wickedness, sinfulness. And that is the characteristic of the world when Jesus came. That the light that came in that first Christmas, uh, Christmas time is to light the world. The Bible tells us in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 11 verse 8, it says that people should enjoy every day of their lives, no matter how long they live, but they should also remember that there will be many dark days. Okay, so in other words, in our, in our life, we can say you know, that there are, you know, the Bible says, uh, Solomon says that we should enjoy the daylight of our lives. Okay? We should enjoy the happy, when you say daylight, that's a happy period of our life. You enjoy that. But also, he said, but also remember that life is not just a happy moment. Right? Lives as characterized by our lives in, in this world are both things. There are dark times, there are dark days, and there are light days. And uh, the, the, uh, the author of Ecclesiastes says that we are to remember, okay? Ka nga, eh, wag tayong masyadong makumpiyansa na we are always happy in cloud nine, but there are times, suddenly, darkness period of our time will come. What are these dark days? These are the darks, these are the days where we feel, you know, negative. There's negative emotions in our life. You know, we are, we are lonely, we are sad. And maybe these are the dark days of confusions. These are the times that we don't know what to do in our life. There's a day, dark days of conflicts in our relationship, family, friends. Colleagues, we experience those class of emotions, of conflicts, and we can say these are dark days. Dark days of disappointments. There are things that we, we want to do, things that we expect to do, and it's not happening, and we are disappointed. Dark days of loss. Somebody died. We lost a loved one, especially during this uh, times of pandemic when we lost of many friends and family members from the sickness. This is a, a dark days of our life and we can say for almost two years now that the world is in the dark because of the pandemic. Many are confused. Many are grie grieving because of the loss of their loved ones. It's the dark days of stress. Dark days of anxiety and fear. Maybe uh, we are heartbroken. Days of depression and despair. So these are what we call the dark days of our life. And that is what Solomon says. Remember, that will happen. And no one is exempted. Rich and poor, male and female, young and old experiencing the dark days of 
their life. In Isaiah chapter 8, verses 21 to 22, Isaiah described here that the people of his days live what he called the dark days of their lives. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 21 and 22, it says, People will wander aimlessly, distressed and hungry for what they don't have. In deep frustration, they become enraged and shake their fists at leaders and even at God. Everywhere they look, they see trouble and darkness and despairs and they have to live in dark days. So here Isaiah described the, the, the condition of the people of God during the time that they are experiencing these dark days in their life. And all we know, you know, Isaiah wrote or become a prophet some 700 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And oftentimes, many scholars, Bible scholars, considered the book of Isaiah as the fifth gospel you know because in the new testament we have four gospels right matthew mark luke and john these are the four gospels the first the first four gospels of the new testament the first four books i mean of the new testament are called the gospels the good news but in the old testament isaiah the book of isaiah is considered the gospel because there's a lot of predictions and prophecy about the coming of the Messiah in the book of Isaiah. So in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 is a prophecy of Isaiah encouraging the people of his days who are working or experiencing the darkest dark days of their lives and he says here that the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. A light that will shine on all who have been living in the shadow of life. So he encouraging and he prophesied, hey, don't be so much in despair and living in depression. Because there will be coming a time when you will see the great light coming the light that will shine in all who have been living in the shadow of death and we all know that later on in isaiah chapter 9 verses 7 8 and 9 he prophesied that a virgin shall uh, conceive and will bear a son and his name will be called Emmanuel, the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace, I mean, the Almighty God. So it's a promise. I mean, this is some 700 years before the birth of the Messiah. So my message today is that the light, the coming of the light, the light of Jesus Christ came in the darkest moment of time. So in other words, in our life, the light of Jesus Christ can come into your darkest days. You know what is the antidote for your darkest moments of your life? When you are experiencing the dark moments as I had described a while ago, what are those dark moments of period of your time you know what's the antidote the antidote is turn to god's light okay so in other words when you are in a room and it's dark what will you do are you just sit down and cry and uh, murmur oh it's dark i wonder why it's dark what will you do turn on the light <laughs> What you will do, you will not just sit down and be depressed and, and complain because it's dark. You're in the room. You know where is the switch, especially if you are in the house, in your house. What's the antidote for darkness? Turn on the light. 
They say, uh, people are saying, uh, you know, that there is no such things are uh, there is no such things as dark. Okay, there is no such element or substance that is dark. They say darkness is the absence of light. So there is no because when there is light, there is no darkness. So in other words, darkness cannot penetrate light. So there is darkness because there is no light. So the antidote, if you are in the darkest moment of your life, turn to God's light. And don't you know that the Bible is filled with references to the effect of God's light into our lives. And first of all, it says that God's nature, God's character, God's uh, attributes is the source of all light in the universe. In other words, if there is without God, there will be no light. Because he himself is the source of light in the darkened universe. Without God, there will be nothing. It's nothing. Look at First John chapter 1, verse 5. God is light, and in him there is what? No darkness at all. God is light. That is his character. That is he himself is light. And in him, if God is present, there will be no more darkness. It is his nature. Because all light comes from God. And we see that in creation, the first act of creation is what? When he created the universe. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. And it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. A summary statement on Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. And what is the first act of creation and God said let there be light that's the first act of creation that's the first thing that God has created light and there was light and God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness that's the first act of creation and at the first Christmas, Christmas 2021 years ago, God came to earth, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give us more light. Light about himself, light about life, about death, life, uh, about death, life, about eternity, about love, forgiveness, salvation, and much, much more that when Jesus was born the first Christmas day, light comes into the world. John 12, 46 says, Jesus said, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world. So that all who put their trust in me will no longer wander in darkness. So that's the first purpose why Jesus came. He came that there will be light in our darkest moment of time. In the time of darkest darkness in our world. And he says, if we will have Jesus and his light into our life, we will not wander into this world any longer in darkness. So, this coming Christmas, I want to ask several questions to you. And the first one is, how does the light of Jesus, when he says, I am the light of the world, 
How does this light that Jesus is saying will help us in the darkest days of our life? So I want to share with you four ways, how, four different ways how the light of Jesus will help you in the dark period of your life. First of all, the first quality and characteristic of light is what? Light can illuminate. Light can illuminate. When you say, pinaliliwanag ng liwanag ang kadiliman. It illuminates. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. Light makes us all things easy to see, right? When you are in, da in a dark ro room, you cannot see. You just, even if you are uh, uh, open your eyes big, you cannot see nothing. It's darkness. So in order to see things, you are to turn on the light switch. And that is what's going on. Sometimes we are walking in the dark, right? When you're walking in the dark, sometimes you're confused. You're confused. You cannot see the true meaning of life. As you journey your life and if you're walking in the dark, you don't know if you are heading to the right directions of your life. And that's happening to the people who don't have the light of God in their life. Yes, they see they're enjoying life. But heading for what? To where they are heading? They don't know. They're confused. And that's why Jesus says, I am the light of of the world it means to say he can give us light in times of our confusion in times so that we don't know what to do what decisions that we will make jesus through his light will give us the true perspective of life clarity the true clarity through him in life so where can we find this true light. Look at John 8 verse 12. Jesus says, I have the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness. That's what happened to me when I'm walking in that uh, barrio with pitch black. I keep on stumbling, you know. For living light will flood your path. So during dark days, Trusting Christ will help us see things more clearly. Number one, in dark days, I want you to write this. In dark days, I need the light of Jesus when I can't see the way forward. When you are confused, when you are undecided, what we call you are in the crossroad of your life. You don't know where to turn, left or right or straight. When you are undecided, when you don't know what's the best in your life, when you can't figure out what to do next, what's the next step. When you are in the dark, when you are confused, when you don't know what to do, Go to Jesus. He is your light. Don't trust your own instinct. Don't trust your own light. Trust the light of Jesus. Isaiah 50 verse 10. For anyone who doesn't know where you're going, anyone groping in the dark, here's what to do. Trust in God. Yes, lean on God. Now, how can you discover God's viewpoint? You know, you're confused, you're undecided, you don't know where to go in your life, what decision that you will make. So this includes anything, career, lab life, moving, you know, these are decisions. 
not necessarily decision to change your clothes. So it's, it's up to you. You don't need guidance on that. <laughs> but big decisions. Okay? Lab life, whether to, 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 sasagutin ko na ba itong nanliligaw sa akin, isa o yung kabila. Yeah? Sometimes is, is a major decision for a girl, a ladies. Or career, or, or if you are going to college, a decision, what is the best course in college? A decision that you will make. You are confused, you are undecided. When you are in the crossroad of your life, go to God. How will you do that? Psalms 119, uh, 19 verse 105. I think that is uh, 119, okay? Is this, yeah. I think that is 119. Your words are a flashlight. I have the living Bible here which speaks of contemporary. That's not the original, but speaks the contemporary. It says the words, your words, the word of God are a flashlight to light the path ahead of me and keep me from stumbling. Okay? Thy word is a light unto my path. That's the literal translation. But this is a living Bible, a paraphrase, that when you are walking in dark, you need a flashlight. Turn where to go? Turn to the Bible. Turn to the Word of God for guidance. It is the light. So if you are undecided, go to the Word of God. Psalm 119. God's instructions are always right and they point the way to happiness. His commands shine brightly and they light up the right way to go. So if you want, now the, the, the year 2021 is soon to be over. We have a new year 2022. If you have a big decision, what's the right way to go next year? You got to get into the Bible because Colossians 1 15 says the peace that Christ gives will guide you in the decisions you will make let me show you an amazing promise of guidance that God gives to you if you let the words of our Lord in the book in the Bible guide your journey Isaiah 42 verse 16 it says God God says I'll take the hand of those who don't know the way who can't see where they're going I'll be a personal guide to them directing them through a known country I'll be right there to show them what roads to take and make sure they don't fall into the ditch these are the things I'll be doing for them Sticking with them, not leaving them for a minute. Wow. Have you heard that? Have you read that? This is an amazing promise from God. God says, I will be your personal guide. Right? He will be your personal guide. So stop ignoring God into your life. Listen to him. Go into the book of God. Go to his words and follow his commands. It is the light. It will light up our life. And it says you won't be stumbling around in the dark. So if you are unsure of what your future lies, make this your daily prayer. In Psalms 24 verse 4, even though I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. So the first benefit of filling your life with the light of God is everything will get clearer so you don't have so much confusion in your life. You have a bigger perspective in life. 
You see things the way God sees them, and that's called wisdom. Why? Because light illuminates. The second effect of light, light can dis in disinfect. Don't you know that light is a great disinfectant? Light kills germs. It purifies water. Light can cleanse and sanitize a lot of stuff. I think here in New York City, the government has started a project of uh, uh, using uh, ultraviolet light to disinfect water system. Instead of uh, uh, putting chlorine to the water that we drink, to make it clear, to clean, they introduce that the passing the, the, the water into a very uh, uh, high uh, degree of ultraviolet in order to disinfect water and kill unnecessary germs. Now, in a similar way, getting the light of God into your life can disinfect and sanitize and purify and cleanse harmful bad stuff out of your life. Don't you know that? When we enter and we get into the light of God, God can cleave your life. Look at this verse at 1 John 1, 69. If we claim to have a relationship with God, but we continue living in darkness, we lie and we aren't following the truth. But if we live in the light as God is in the light, then we can have real fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. You see? When we have Jesus, the light of Jesus, the blood of Jesus will disinfect, will purify, will cleanse us, sanitize us. His blood that was shed on the cross will purify us from sins. So if we claim to be without sin, we are just fooling ourselves, the Bible says, and refusing the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from every wrong in our life. Next thing that I want to write you to write in dark days, I need the light of Jesus when I want a clean start. Is there a way to wipe up your sins and start a clean slate to have a fresh start? Yes, it is accepting the light of God. That is what we call being born again. When you accepted Jesus Christ, you are being born again. It's like a baby, right? When the baby was born, you see the baby born innocent, right? Without sin, clean, right? No, nothing harmful. To him. That is what happened to us when we accepted Jesus Christ into our life. We have a clean slate. We are being born again. It means that we have a brand new life. We have a new life that is uh, started to blossom into our journey. Everything in our life, all our sins are forgiven. All our sins has forgotten by God. Everything is cleansed by the light of Jesus Christ. And then the darkness is lifted out of your life. First Samuel chapter 22 verse 29. You Lord are my light and you dispel my darkness. The darkness of guilt. The darkness of regret. The darkness of shame, darkness of which you could have done it differently, like the past. He says, when you have the light of God, 
he will dispel all your darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 and 9. In the past your life was full of darkness. But now you are full of light in the Lord. Now you can live like children of light. And God's light brings every kind of goodness. Right living and truth. So the question for you this Christmas is. What regret or what guilt or shame in your life needs to be cleansed and be disinfected and sanitized by exposing your life, your life into the light of Christ. I want you to think about that this coming Christmas. What needs to be cleansed in your life? Now let's move on to the next benefit. I have to go faster now. Okay, light illuminates, light disinfects, and third, light can heal. Don't you know that light can heal too? Scientists are discovering more and more about the healing properties, properties and the healing power of light. In medicine, we see light is now being used in all kinds of therapeutic ways. We use them from lasers, which was used in surgeries, wounds and all kinds to different levels of imprinted of light to for for you know they use it even to cure depression on people and one of the most common uses of light is found in dermatology because of its ability to fight bacteria blue light is blue light is routinely now used in doctors office to treat acne and red light is being used to treat wrinkles and light stimulates the what they call the meto mitochondria in your skin you see the healing power of lights all of these are essential to your physical health but what about our spiritual health what about our emotional wounds what about our uh, the sufferings from depression and other things in our life? Spiritual sicknesses that affl afflict us because of this broken world. And I think the parallel applies too. In dark days, I need the light of Jesus when I'm wounded and I'm in pain. You need the light of Jesus. It gives you the power, the healing power of God to heal your emotional pain, your spiritual pain, your physical pain, relational pain. When you feel discouraged, disappointed, or depressed, or despair, the antidote is to turn on to the light of Jesus in those dark days. Psalms 69 verse 29 is how. The psalmist says, I'm wounded and I'm in pain, so rescue me, O God, by your saving power. Psalms 103, verse 3, he forgives all my sins and he heals me. Colossians 1, 12 to 13, the Father has made you able to share in all he's prepared for his people in the kingdom of life, for he has freed us from the power of darkness. You see? When you are in pain, if you are suffering in your dark days, go to the light of Jesus and he will give you healing. Amen. Fourthly, the fourth benefits, light also grows things. So you see, light illuminates, light disinfects, it's, it, it, it also heals, but also light grows things. Light grows things. Don't you know that to grow plants, the, the, the plants grow by what we call photosynthesis. Which is, potho means light. So, means you say your plants, in order to grow, needs light. Kaya nga, pagka winter, you know, we want uh, our uh, plants sometimes go out. To have the sunlight 
because it helped them, because uh, uh, they are dependent sometimes to light. No light, no growth. No light, no power. And that is true also in our life. In many ways. In many ways. God sends the light into our soul to grow us. Our services, our church, our, our everything that we do in church. Is the light coming from God to help us grow spiritually. They help us to grow in the darkest days of our life. When the sun is hidden for us, go to the church. Sometimes people stay away from church when they are depressed. No. When you have problems, when you are in despair, go to church. Because the church is God's light to help you grow spiritually. When you can see the light, Go to the light of God. Write this down again. I write in dark days. I need the light of Jesus to change me for the better. God will help us to change in the better. Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. I'm asking God to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will grow in your knowledge of God, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the wonderful future he has promised to those he called you. That's the growth life. So that when you grow in your knowledge of God, he says, I pray that your hearts be flooded with light. The apostle Paul says, the light of God. And that light will help us grow. All of these verses that we have read. Why does God talk so much about light in the Bible? Because God is light. And the light is the light of love. The life of God's life. First John 2, 8 says, The darkness in our lives disappears in the new light of life. In Christ shine here. So this coming Christmas season, here's the question. Are you really wanting to exchange darkness, the dark days of your life, into the light of God? Christmas is all about Jesus came to light our world. Christmas is the time for us to turn on the light and let Christ shine your life so bright. Remember, Jesus is the light that will conquer your darkness in your life. He's the answer to the darkest moment of, a, of your life. Not just for your dark days, but for all your days. It's time to exchange the love of God, the light of God, Jesus Christ, into your life. We thank the Lord because uh, today we are reminded that we really need that light. And that bright light only comes from the Lord. And we are so grateful and we are blessed because we already know the giver of that light the giver of our light light amen hallelujah we can all be seated thank you pastor joel for that wonderful message hallelujah and we are now going to go, uh, proceed to our uh, one of the best part of uh, each services of each church the uh, our tithes the giving of our tithes and offering but and, and while we are preparing our tithes and offering our uh, usher there if you need envelope you can ask from you know sister rochelle our usher and uh, you can write your name and the amount and where do you want to allocate this uh, tithes and offering or love gift amen and while we're preparing for that i would like to make some announcements Monday to Friday from 6 o'clock to 7 ish in the morning. We have our uh, Bible reading, our daily, uh, our uh, Bible daily bread. 
<laughs> right? And then right after that, 30 minutes after that is our uh, prayer where we where we give and where we uh, pray for one another. And those people that were pray that are praying with us are all the uh, prayer warriors all over the world. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we're all ready for our tithes and offering, I would like to call on uh, Brother Cesar to encourage us and pray for our tithes and offering. God is good. Last week, I was hospitalized for a very painful uh, uh, pain on my part of my body. And I went to Elmer's Hospital. And that moment, I told myself, I'm done. Because the pain was 0 to 10, it was 8. Oh my goodness, this is my, this is my end. A lot of tests done to me. And I found that it's sciatica. Oh my goodness. At that time, I already committed myself. Oh my God, I'm going to the Lord. But thank God, I'm still here. Yeah. And the pain was gone. And you know, at that time, they gave me some medication. I went to physical therapist. Nothing happened. There was no changes. And at that moment, what shall I do? I asked myself. What shall I do? And ask the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, on the Acts, the, the Lord said, I'm going to the Father to prepare a mansion for you. But I promise you, you will not be alone because I will send a helper. And that is the Holy Spirit. At that moment, I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are promised to us that you will be with us. For our loneliness and will not be alone. Teach me what to do. Guide me. What shall I do? And in my vision, I saw some exercises. And I saw it. Then I follow it. Now look at me. Hallelujah. And at that moment, I almost cried. Really, I am a man. But at that moment, I almost cried. My tears are flowing because the pain that was the the most painful moment of my life. Now, I want to glorify the name of the Lord. And also those Holy Spirit who teach me, who give me vision. And that's why right now, that's my testimony for the Lord to give His glory and honor. Not for my sake, but for the Lord's sake. And for He is a promise keeper. And that's moment, right? let us pray for our tithe and offering. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless those hands who give and bless, those, bless also those people who cannot give at this moment. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, bless this gift and offerings or tithes to be used for your glory and honor, for your kingdom to glories. We ask this, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, through the, through the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. that our Wednesday Bible class is still going on. Everybody is welcome to attend. That's every Wednesday, 8.30 to 10 p.m. New York time. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, you are so good. You are so great and you're always true to your promises. Thank you, Lord, for the light that gives light. And that's you, oh God. Thank you for coming to our lives, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for our pastor, for our church leader, Have a deeper relationship with the light.
light giver with a light giver, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless us all, and we'll see you all again.